Hey, everybody. I'm Chicago Psychic. Aloha shirt psychic Mel Dor. This is an Aloha shirt. It's just a long sleeve one. <laughs> um, and I'm back from vacation. It was two weeks I was gone. A lot happened. But I've got Linda G in the house. Yay. <laughs> and I missed you, my friend. But I had Arthur in your place. Uh, I'm sorry. Say again. I had Arthur. Oh, okay. Arthur and I did a 10 o'clock show. Well, that's a good substitute. Yeah. He's a sweetie. Um, he sure is. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, the event here in Chicago is filling up really well. So everybody, please. Um, Did you ever get like a little uh, thumbnail or something I can post on my channel? I will make it. I just. Okay. But uh, it's going to be. Uh, the dates are going to be September 26th. That's a Thursday evening. It's a meet and greet and the registration. Um, we then it'll be Friday, the 27th. It's going to be at Pippin's in Chicago. It's a really cool venue. Um, Friday, the 27th from 9 a.m. until noon will be the morning sessions. Then we'll break for lunch. Lunch is included. from right, And a little breakfast, too. Yes, there'll be a little breakfast, like some bagels and things Coffee like that. Coffee bagels, yeah. In Thursday evening, we'll have hors d'oeuvres. Uh, drinks are not included. If you want alcohol, well, no alcohol for the event. But afterwards, you can go upstairs. There's a bar and they can serve you. <laughs> right. Uh, and then, so Friday, uh, and then from 1.30 to 4.30, we have our afternoon session. And then at five o'clock, uh, Deanne and Priscilla are going to talk about the oils. The essential oils is going to be fun. And then Saturday, the 28th, from it's the same thing from 9 a.m. till noon, morning session. Uh, lunch will be a buffet. We do have non-meat options for people who don't eat meat. And then um, the afternoon session, 1.30 to 4.30. And at five o'clock, we'll have our farewells, our farewell dinner. Or fell where I'm sorry, not dinner. Suppers are not included, but the bar upstairs has great food. Um, it but on um Friday and Saturday evening, they have dueling pianos, uh, where we're going to have our venue. So if we stay until nine o'clock, we can watch the pianos duel, so right? Right, um, so it's going to be a nice, it's going to be really good. So, but this is kind of our first formal announcing because we we're kind of talking behind closed doors and we've already sold 10 tickets. <laughs> yeah, this is the first formal announcing. So um, I'm taking care of the registration and all of that. Linda's taking care of the brochures for, you know, for the printers. I mean, I'm the sorry. Lan the lanyards. The lanyards, the, the uh, satchels and all of that stuff. So, so we're going to have Linda, me, Kevin Lewis, Kevin Chandler, Kim Copeland, and then uh, Deanne and Priscilla, as I said, are going to talk about their oils and things. So it's going to be um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be the gangs all here. That's right. And then we've got one coming up uh, in 2025 down in St. Croix. Uh, it's going to be right during Halloween week. So. Yeah, so, but you've got to uh, sort that out before we accept. But now, how do people that want to go to the Chicago gig? And by the way, you guys, if you're coming from a distance, I recommend coming in on a, the Wednesday. Yes. If you're going to gonna... sort yourself out, and then you can go to the gig. But what hotels do you recommend? Yes. If you're going to come in, come in the day before. Now, the price of, the, of what we're doing does not include hotel or dinners, it does include the little continental kind of breakfast and includes lunches and the food's going to be incredible uh it's buffet style it's really cool we've already figured out the menus and everything that's all done uh so the hotels near there are the drake that is an icon hotel in chicago it's in walking distance the claridge house is a boutique hotel uh, that's c-l-a-r-r-i-d-g-e claridge house if you want to go higher end you can go to the Sofitel. Um, the peninsula is really high end. That's the most expensive hotel in Chicago, but there's a really neat holiday Inn down there too. Yeah. And it's not an arm and a leg. No, it's not. So it's very reasonably priced. Well, the address of the venue is now, if you call Pippins, they're not going to know anything about it. So, they're not going to know. So, so don't call there, but I will tell everybody, hold on. Give me one second. 
I should, I probably got the address by heart. <laughs> okay. So the address of Pippins is, give me one second, is 39 East Chicago Avenue. So if you Google hotels close to 39 East Chicago Avenue, it'll give you a whole list. Um, um, some of the people are staying at the Drake. Uh, that's really fun. And if you stay into Sunday, uh, at, I think it's right around three or so, they have high English tea. It's really cool. Right. It's really, it's, it's, they, they do it up well. The Sofitel is a good hotel. The Claridge House, the Holiday Inn. There's one near 39 East Chicago Avenue. The name of the place we're going to have it is called Pippins, P-I-P-P-I-N-S. We're going to be downstairs. It's owned by my friend Lynn McKinney, and she's coming to the event, and she's going to join us. She's a sweetie. She owns, uh, I think, nine or ten venues in Chicago. And it's really an icon place in Chicago. And we go off into these rooms, but they're very, they're way better even than the Sedona rooms. So very uh, nice. Well, they're they're in the basement, but it's when it says basement, it's not like a dungeon. It's not like Yeah, that. no. It's very nice. It's really, really nice. And so I'm excited. And uh, let them know. Okay, so they're gonna call your office. Yes. So it's first come, first serve. So if you say, well, we'll think about it, we'll send a check. You know, we've only got room for 50 people and we've already sold. Well, now you only have 40, but go ahead. Right. Correct. So you can call my office at 847-590-5411. Again, 847-590-5411. If you email me at, on my website, www.meldor.com, uh, I'll just pass it on to Joan and she's going to want to get a phone number from, from you anyway. So okay. just call my office. We're not accepting credit cards. We're not doing them more as well. We're doing it the old fashioned way. Check or cashier's check. So you'll mail us a check when we get it. We write it on the ledger and that automatically gives you your space. So <laughs> awesome. And then I'll I'll have Joan call everybody to let them know we received their checks. Uh and we just made our first deposit today. And so um yeah. Now the date is uh September. It'll be it'll be Thursday evening, September the 26th. All day Friday the twenty seventh and all day Saturday the twenty eighth in the evening. So is if you're flying out, if you can't get a hotel beginning the Wednesday before, I would come in the Wednesday before. Absolutely, okay. And then you'll want to stay checked in until tell me you're going to check out on Sunday the twenty ninth. Okay. So I, those are the and uh, by the way, uh, Julie and Dennis are coming. For those you guys know, my dear friends from Sedona. They're wonderful. And they're staying at the Drake. So they're staying at the Drake. Yeah. Um, um, I'm staying with Gerard Butler. Apparently he has a little flat down there. So <laughs> rumor has it. Rumor has it. <laughs> but if you're interested in sharing a room too, be sure to tell her. Maybe we you remember Sedona would have sometimes not too many people because us old women don't like sharing. Well, the way it goes is, you know, how to how, a hotel room's a hotel room, so they charge yeah. room. Uh, but if you're going to have double occupancy, just tell it. Just tell them, you know. But here again, the Drake. It's an icon hotel in Chicago. Uh, Claridge House is a boutique hotel, and that's kind of neat. Uh, and all of our presenters are staying at the Claridge House. So okay, all right. So if you want to mingle with, because I know people want to touch our Kevin's. They want to touch them. Want to touch our Kevin's? All right. Gary and I are going to stay at the Drake. Um, okay. Uh, the Sofitel is expensive. The Peninsula is really expensive. But the Hall but the Sofitel is more modern. It's, more modern. But the Drake uh, is it was more expensive than the Drake, and uh, it's more you know clean cut, kind of like you know European style modern. Drake is old Chicago. Really yeah, is. I like that. I and like that. Three favorite hotels in the city are the Drake the Palmer House Hilton and the Conrad Hilton, but don't go to the Palmer House or the Conrad Hilton. It's too far away from the venue. Okay. 
So, and this is going to be in what we call the Gold Coast, and it's in the entertainment district. So the Gold Coast uh, is is called the Gold Coast because there's a lot of wealth there, and it's really cool. It's right off Michigan, awesome. right by the old standpipe, and so it's going to be. I nice. love it. I love it. That's great. Uh, the price. Um, I don't know. So like, we just tell them the price when they call my office, Linda. How do you want to work that? Oh, you can tell them now. Okay, the price is seventeen hundred dollars, uh, and here again, that includes Thursday evening meet and greet. Linda's going to have books. Deanne and Priscilla are going to have their oils. I think Kim Copeland might bring her books, um, and uh, registration, meet and greet, hors d'oeuvres. We'll have a little presentation. We'll call everybody. Yeah. We'll play Chicago music. Yay! Yeah, and if you already have um, your book, bring it with you, and I'll sign it. There you go. So it's going to be all day Friday uh, and then Friday evening from about five till six, a lecture by uh, Deanne and Priscilla about the essential oils. And then Saturday all day. And then it, we stop at 430 at five o'clock. Then we'll have um, our farewells and our raffles and all that good stuff. So uh, awesome. on Friday or Saturday, if you want to stay until nine o'clock, the dueling panels, you know, it doesn't cost anything. And it's in the same area where we're going to be, and it's going to be incredible. So, awesome. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Lynn McKinney, my friend, is even uh, there were booths down there. She's taking those out. She's put in tables, like four tops. So when we have our 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 meet and greet, and when you do go up on stage, people are going to sit at like tables with linens and things like that. So I love it. All righty. Uh, I'm excited. So 847-590-5411. When we get the check, we mark it, and I will announce when we're sold out. I will have a wait list just in case. So Yeah. And we've already okay. got a lot of inquiries just with the teasers. So, all right. Let me just get my questions here. And we're ready to go. Boy, I missed a lot since I've been gone, huh? I was, um, okay. Are you ready, Linda? Yeah, I do have some good news. The yes. judge they refused Trump changing the date. They're going to start picking the jury for the trial in New York um, the 15th of uh, April. You probably already talked about this, but now that you brought up judge, when Eileen Cannon started like giving instructions to jurors and they weren't even jurors and her instructions were like, either you got to say the earth is flat or the earth is square and made no sense. And I, my guides told me she's trying to trap Jack Smith, but it won't work because she's, she doesn't even get what this trial is about. No. It's, it's about. And also, by the way, she's using a civil, a sort of a civil thing. She's not using federal. Trust me, Jack Smith is going to present her to the 11th district. That's what I think. And I intuit that um, he's just going to answer her. I can't answer your request because it's illegal what you're saying. She has no clue what this case is about. But I think she does. I think she's taking her place from Trump. That's what I think. Right. And so. also, I want to mention, uh, Sterling and I were on yesterday, and Sterling had mentioned that Trump would come up with this money somehow. Okay. But today, they ruled that he didn't have to pay that whole $454 million. He only has to pay a hundred and something thousand, 140, no, 140 something million, which he's going to be able to come up with. But Sterling had said he'll come up with it. But I wanted to tell you guys that that's just to a bond. Right. When he's, when he, when all this is done and he's found guilty and the court say, no, you're guilty, then he'll have to go back and pay all this. Well, he's going to claim he can. He can't afford it. So I, they should have made him come up with the whole amount of money. But I think there's... Yeah, well, he just said, on, I've got the money. I've got cash. In, I've got almost $500 million in the bank. After the attorneys announced he's broke. So... He tells on himself. But I have a question. Sure. I'm sure Jack Smith will take this to the 11th Circle, Eileen Cannon. I feel at some point they're going to remove her from this case. because I saw that, yeah. Because if... If she dismisses this case at that point, then there's nothing anybody can do. So I, know. I hope they, they get rid of her before that happens. So yeah. anyway, all right. 
All righty. One with the universe says, yay, hello. I'd like to know if Merrick Garland is delaying J6 prosecutions, if J6 planners to protect people embedded inside the government at FBI, CIA, DOG, and Congress. The answer to that is no. He's not delaying it. He wanted to have all of his ducks in a row. <laughs> That's how he is. That's why he's so frustrating. But he's very methodical. Yeah. I'd rather have a little bit of methodical than just throwing something at the wall and see what's going to stick, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could have gone faster, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Peace Love says, will Nikki Haley be on the ballot? If so, will she... Uh, will she get enough Republican votes to do damage to Biden? If she's on the ballot, she might be a write-in. What do you think, Linda? Yeah, she Nikki Haley is not coming back on the ballot at all. Okay, good. Um, all right. But you know what? Can I tell you something? Because I know Biden's going to win. I'm almost feeling somebody will give her some sort of position. That's what I think, too. That's what I'm seeing, because I don't see her being back tossed back. I see them giving her a position. He's going to be formidable um, against Trump. I can tell you that right now. She's not. She's going. She's going to be like Liz Cheney. She, I'm sorry. She's going to be like a Liz Cheney. She's not going to back down. <laughs> no. All right. Um, here's a good one. Jennifer Leonard says, and this is the first I've heard of this. So, ooh, this is good. Are Tara Reid's claims that President Biden sexually assaulted her true? Tara has now retained a London attorney and is requesting that Jim Jordan bring her claims to hold hearings in Congress. Will these hearings and her accusations cause problems for Biden? And what will the outcome be? I can't believe this person's even asking if it's true. I, I, From the moment this woman came out, I said she was a Russian plant. She, is she changed her story. First, he he sort of put his hands on her. Next thing you know, he's literally raping her. So Tara, I, I can't believe this woman is a fraud, you guys, period. And by the way, she moved back to Russia. She's a Russian plan, so, of course. Yeah, so Russia is telling her, get Jim Jordan to do this and that, but it's a nothing burger. You ever notice how with Jim Jordan, when they found out they couldn't do anything against Hunter Biden, that all that was so bogus after Smirnoff's, they found out he was lying. They just don't quit, do they? You know, no. behind it, clearly. And so is Trump. <laughs> so let me ask you something. We're only one away from a majority with Republicans. And in the House. In the House. Uh, Marjorie Taylor uh, has already, she's doing a petition to remove uh, Mike, Mike Johnson. Will they put in our guy or will, because apparently the Democrats said they'd be willing to keep him in as speaker, but they want him to work on doing a, a, a thing for um, Ukraine. The Democrats said they'd be willing to keep in Mike Johnson as speaker. They would be willing to vote to keep him in. But I see a lot of people not voting to take him out, even with the Republicans. Well, it's getting kind of dangerous at margin. margin. And, and also a lot of Republicans are telling her off. What the hell are you doing, they're saying. Right. Well, because the reason that she came forth with that is because they, at the last minute, they passed a budget. And she's... Yeah, and she, and, oh, you're working for the Democrats. And so she's, she's uh, Trump's puppet. Well... Let them close the government down, right? She doesn't care. That's the whole thing. She doesn't care about the American people. But she, he cares, obviously. Of course he does. And so, I don't know. I think it'll get some momentum, but but I still see somebody else leaving the house. To okay, that's probably what, because I'm almost, well, uh, Mikowski from Alaska already said she would never vote for Trump again. And right. she she may leave the Republican Party. And she know, will. And she okay. will. So, and I see Marjorie Taylor Greene gone at some point. <laughs> well, she's in trouble. Like Jack Smith is, is his, his, his hands are itching because he can't wait to get a hold of her. And she's going to be indicted. So, oh, yes, I definitely. So. I don't mean voted out. I mean, indicted along with, with Matt Gates and ever, you know. <laughs> 
Right, right. By the way, um, this this just hit me. Is it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But for my birthday, my my birthday was the twenty second. I turned seventy. Would you believe? Oh my god. Um, but son, yesterday Gary took me to uh, it just closed in Chicago. It's called On Your Feet, and it is the story of Gloria Estefan and Emilio Est. Em Emilio. Yeah, I heard about this. Uh -huh. Oh, you've got to see it if you love Latin music, which I do. I was standing up dancing. It was incredible. You got to see it. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Anyway, enough for that. But <laughs> all right, my theme is Off Your Feet. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, Sweetie Pie says, this is good. Texas is counting votes by hand, paper only. <laughs> uh, they already have found irregularities. This, so, this sounds so corrupt, she says. Will it change or continue? I see it continuing, but there's going to be such an outcry about it. They better think they should change it. <laughs> what do you yeah. think? Yeah, um, Texas is in trouble. They're getting purple right now. But uh, it's not a good living in Texas. Well, people are going to want to leave. I see Beto, Beto or however you say his name. He's going to, I still see him running for something else. And I see him. I, I'm telling you, somebody said, well, you got that wrong, Beto. And of course, she didn't mention that I got it right, that Trump would win, would lose. You got it wrong with Beto. I said, you know what? I think he did win. I think he won because the AG announced that he withheld 250,000 ballots and was proud of it. And maybe you could be seeing a future event too with Beto. That's what I think. That could be. That could be it. And it's going to come out that that whole election was off because of Paxton. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie MD says, and we've, we've read on this before, but it's a good question. Will term limits be placed on Supreme Court justices, Congress, and senators? I see term limits placed on the Supreme Court justices. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a couple of years away, but it will happen. Now, this is one that I hadn't heard. Boy, I've been out of the loop for a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. Um, Hudanoff says, could you please read on the Kroger and Albertson's merger. Hopefully it doesn't go through. It could become a monopoly because Kroger is the largest grocer in the United States. Yeah. I kind of, it's going to get held up a lot because I'm I, almost feeling like it can't go through. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's going to be uh, antitrust. Oh, is that what it's going to be? Okay. But I do see at some point and into this price gouging, I see legislation passed to stop the price gouging. Ever notice, Linda, how when the prices go up, they don't come back down? Oh, they always promise they're going to come back down. Yeah, well, they don't. You know, it's like it's like chicken. You know, the chicken prices went so high, people stopped buying it. And guess what? The prices came down. They dropped like crazy, yeah. All right. Um, oh. uh, Lisa Foster. Hi, Lisa. It's our friend from Kentucky. Hi, Lisa. So we missed you. Um, hello and love you both. My question, is the housing market going to tank? No. I don't see it tanking. I see. Well, we're going, we're, according to the feds, they're going to drop the interest rates down probably 0.4, uh, three times before the end of the year. Also, they changed the laws on brokers because apparently some manipulation was happening so now they've changed the laws that they can't do that anymore. So it'll be cheaper to buy a house. And also, as soon as Biden's in again, he's going to do the, you know, new home buyers. He's going to give help to buyers. Uh, there's a lot of help that'll come in. But what happened was those brokers would just add points. And when they add points, it makes the interest rate go up. I mean, they this yeah. is interest rate. It's almost like price gouging, if you will. On interest rates, but you know we had predicted that the next time the Fed met, they would keep bringing the the prices down, and that's going to put more inventory on the market. Uh, I think they did it to prevent another two thousand and eight because property was becoming so over speculated, and it was. Well, they did those terrible loans; those were fraud loans. That's correct. That is yeah, correct. and everybody got foreclosed on. But it let me tell you something that, and also you know the state of California. We can't get insurance. State Farm told me if I sell this house, unless I move out of state, they're not going to insure me. 
Well, I see that changing too. I see I see my guides tell me legislation passed where these insurance companies can't be so willy-nilly. Well, we're not going to insure you because of because of wrong. No, we're not going to insure you because we actually had to pay for people That's that my point. help. We yeah. don't like it. Yeah. Now we had one storm and everybody's basement flooded and they said, Oh, we're not going to cover that anymore. And and I see and I see legislation passed where they're gonna they're going to say, no, you've got to cover these people and that you can't gouge on the prices for insurance. You can't raise the prices so high that so that nobody can afford it, because that's what. They'll yeah. Talk. Yeah. Oh, this is a really good question. And I heard about this and I. Let me ask the question and I tell you what what came through my head when it first happened. Um Martina, I can't pronounce her last name. I apologize. She said, who was really behind the terroristic act in Russia? I, my feeling is Putin was behind it. That's well, Putin, they, some guy answered an ad. And uh, I also think he encouraged ISIS to get some people in there. But uh, he's desperately trying to make it look like it's Ukraine and it's not. It was just like when... You know, everybody knows it's for entertainment purposes only that, you know, when Hamas invaded Israel or attacked Israel, not invaded, but everybody knew that Iran and Putin was behind it. And, and when I heard about that thing that that and the United States had warned Moscow that something like that was going to happen. And so when I heard about it, I thought. Hmm. Just exactly what you just said. Putin worked with ISIS behind the scenes to have something like that happen so he could blame Ukraine. And it's blowing up in his face. Yeah, because none of the guys there spoke any Russian and they didn't speak Ukrainian either. Just exactly what happened uh, when Hitler came to power and he had the Reichstag burned. He had it done, but he blamed it on the, he blamed it on a Jewish man. And that's how oh, I didn't know started. that. Yeah, yep. absolutely. That's how Hitler started his whole thing against the Jews. Damn. And that's how Hitler kept martial law because the Reichstag was burned. So, well, that's what uh, Putin did to get in office. He had a bunch of terrorist stuff. He said, if you vote for me, I'll keep these terrorists. But he instigated the terrorism. Absolutely. And that's exactly what Trump would do here. Don't care. He tried it and it didn't work. Well, you know who else tried it was uh, President Bush and uh, what's his name? Um, Cheney. Oh, yeah. Under when we when President Bush's numbers started to drop. Terrorism. They would bring up to re recon four or five because we have... We have talked that there's going to be another. So he 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 worked. They worked on people's fears, and then finally everybody was kind of saying, "Why is it only when your numbers go down are you doing these upgrades on the thing?" No, we don't believe you anymore. You know, um, my favorite saying when uh, W was president was that, um, "Well, just what you just said. When his popularity gets down, there's a terrorist behind every bush." I wrote a book about George W. Bush. I did. You wrote a book? Um, it's called The Philosophy of George W. Bush. And it's, well, it was actually written by G.B. Eagle and W.B. Eagle. I'll explain that in a second. But you see, when you open it, it's all blank pages. <laughs> you just had the one book printed. <laughs> G.B. Eagle. If you read as Beagle, it stands for Gizmo Beagle and Wizard Beagle. That's a good like idea. How long ago did you do that? Huh? How long ago did you do that? Years ago, I knew somebody who worked, worked in a book binder, and I and I asked him if he could do it, and he did. It was <laughs> that's so funny. I was gonna sell them. It was just all blank pages. <laughs> so funny. Anyway, all right. Uh, Dinah says, hello to my two favorite people. Do you see Mark Robinson, Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina, running for governor, winning? 
he's a Republican and Trump loves him. So what's the name again? Mark Robinson. He's a lieutenant governor of North Carolina. He's running for governor. He's a Republican and Trump loves him, Dinah says. Well, there's one guy that Trump loves that is up for something, but he's not going to win. He's running against Sherrod Brown. He's not going to win. No, Sherrod Brown's going to win. Let me look at this guy, Robinson. I'm not getting a good feeling with it. He's dreaming. He's at the, some information may come out about him. He's a fool. I don't think he's going to win. I don't either. Did you get new tarot cards? No. <laughs> I've had these for a while. These old things? But I'm starting to practice with Lena Rodriguez's cards. She is wonderful, isn't she? Oh, she's wonderful. We got to do a collab with her. Uh, Lena, give us a call. Lena, come on, girlfriend. All right. <clears throat> I love her sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, she's fantastic. Barb Mecca. The, the, yet, the Yeti. <laughs> Barb Mecca. I needed a good Linda laugh today. All right. Hi, Mel and Linda. Will Princess Catherine's cancer diagnosis and treatment strengthen her marriage? Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if her marriage was in trouble. You know. Um, oh, I think he he's like his dad in a lot of ways, and he's got a very short temper. He's a cancer. You he's know, like his dad in a lot of ways, and even Diana brought up that he had a horrible temper. So, um, but I do. I. I mean, I was, they were going with all this. He had a baby with another woman and all this, which may be true. I don't know. But when I first started reading on her, I felt she had cancer. I told everybody that. Yeah, you did. You did. I remember she, that. She was in for quite a struggle. But I also felt that he really loves her and that he wants to do everything he can to make sure she's okay. Um, did they ever say where her cancer was? No, but... People are writing me, telling me they think it's ovarian cancer and stuff. But normally with blood work, you will get positive things, with, and especially nowadays. You can tell when someone has cancer. But I think there was some sort of encapsulated tumor, maybe even on her, on her uh, intestines. Because they went in there and removed it and then found it was cancerous. Because the chemo they're doing is called preventative chemo. Oh, if okay. she had ovarian cancer, it wouldn't be no preventative chemo. No, it'd it would be, be straight different. out save your life chemo. It would be different. Yeah, this almost sounds like it might have been a colon or something. But she's young. That's what I was always feeling. I was feeling they they took something out or even resection and then put something back. But unless it's they, the reason they didn't talk to the press was because it was a shock. Everybody was in shock. Wait a second. Wait a second. I have cancer. And also, I feel she really wanted to deal with it with the children. And then what Diana meant, when Diana came to me, she kicked off her shoes and said, said, um, uh, Princess Kate now is wearing my shoes. What she meant was, it could have meant that the husband maybe is a little bit of a cheater, but what it because that's the, the the way the monarchy's been since the beginning. Uh, but what she meant was um that she was going to be in the public's eye and they were like vicious, they wouldn't let go like a bunch of rabid dogs. Wow. So I feel that's what she meant. I just wonder if maybe sometimes certain forms of leukemia can cause colon cancer because the that my doctor told me that the colon actually is a big part of the immune system, believe it or not, in addition to digestion. Yeah. And sometimes those lymph nodes, the colon- But if she had leukemia, it wouldn't be preventive chemo. No, it wouldn't be. Well, it could be. I don't That's know. the key word. Preventive. Um, I still think it's probably colon or something. I else. think they got something encapsulated and it, it was cancerous, but they went, they're they going to go ahead and it's give either, her the chemo. It's either that- It's going to kick her butt. She has some time before she feels better. Either that or cervical. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but they cervical, they would have done a pap smear and it showed cancer. Yeah. She was shocked by this news. They went in there and they found the cancer. That's true. I didn't think about that. 
Yeah. My they told her like, they told her there was no cancer. My feeling is they'll get it under control. Yeah. Well, no. Y yes. They'll try. I'm sorry, say again. I couldn't hear you. They'll try. She might get, you know, some reprieve, but she, uh, she's got quite a battle. Yeah, she's gonna have a big battle. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you, it's not looking good for King Charles. No, I know poor King Charles. He he waited so long for that crown. And now I, the word is he has pancreatic cancer, which is the killer. I don't think he'll be around six months from now. I hope I'm yeah. wrong. That's my prediction. I hope I'm wrong too. I don't, like, you know, I don't like to predict stuff like that. Okay. Uh, okay, we've already answered this one. and But somebody's asking, is anybody after Putin? Everybody's after Putin. <laughs> <laughs> it was about the terrorist attack. Even the Russians are after Putin. Right. Okay, so Pam, this is a good question from Pam. She says, I wonder if Donald's lawyers thought Afani's children or Judge McAfee's children or even Nathan Wade's children. How would such slander affect their lives? Do you think that his lawyers ever thought about that? And the answer is- No, they could care less. They're care. like dogs, rabid dogs. Like care. that, like the press over in the UK with Kate, they don't care about what's really going on. Although they've told everybody to stand down. It was just like when Diana was killed and the press said, leave the boys alone. Right. Well, here she makes a good point. Pam says the South would like to go back to before the Civil War. Well, not everybody in the South, but some of the states would. She said, do they realize this is futile? And the answer is they don't care. They don't care. It's scary to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so married something. I can't. It's a, it's really long. Married Mary says, okay, I asked Linda on her last video when you're coming to Chicago and where you're going to be and can I help all volunteer? Well, we've got all the volunteers we need. Uh, we've Thank got... You. We've Remember, got, he has an office full of... Uh, Paid staff. I have paid staff that are working on this. Plus, I have seven volunteers. So we've got all the volunteers. But thank you for offering. But that was very, very nice of you to offer. It was wonderful. Okay. Um, so, all right. The next one is, um, this is a good one. Linda Aragon says, will Trump make it through to the election? So much mixed information given. I don't think he's going to croak between now and the election. <laughs> I saw him going through the election, but he, soon after, life just gets terrible. Yeah. Um, Play for Peace said, thank you for Mondays. I enjoy the show. And then says, was Putin behind the attack in Moscow, which we've answered. Yes. Um, and the thing is, the Moskonians can't find that out because th those a lot of young people died. They find out he set that up and killed their youngsters. It's bad enough that he's killing their sons and their fathers. Well, my feeling is he already suspects. They already suspect it anyway. You know, I've got a lot. Of, Chicago has a huge Russian population and um, huge Ukrainian population as well. And I, you can see my Ukraine, my Ukrainian flag behind me there. Uh, I'm not Ukrainian, but a lot of you know people here have relatives in Russia, and that they're giving me the feedback that they can't stand Putin. And it's- yeah. Is it getting worse? Yes, much worse, much worse. There's a way, you know, that they can't even put a, a flower on, on Navalny's memorial because they're, they're gonna get arrested. People, there's there's this huge wave of, of protests against Putin. And, and the Russians here are laughing because when Putin said he won the election by a landslide, yeah, because who counted the votes? <laughs> they changed the votes. Of course they did. He of said course. he won by more than the people that voted. Yeah, I rest my case. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. Netanyahu, so the UN has demanded an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Netanyahu has canceled his trip out here to the United States. He was going to talk to Congress, but they've canceled the trip. He's I'm, not listening to what anybody's saying. I've been saying that. And he's going to be held for war crimes against humanity. Thank you. And they're going to take him out. I mean, the Israelis are going to get tired of it as well. Many Israelis don't like him. Yeah, I know. 
And, you know, he doesn't realize. They don't want children being killed and hurt and starved. And the problem is with what Netanyahu is doing in Gaza, he's fanning the flames of anti-Semitism. And, you know, know. He's very pro-Israel. I'm just anti-Netanyahu. I mean. Yeah. And the other thing is he um, he doesn't listen to any advice from anybody. He thinks he's king for a day. He wants this war to go on so he can stay in power. He can wag the dog. But he's, Yeah. But he's really showing his rear, and it's not going to be very good. It's going to buy him. It's going to buy him squarely where the sun don't shine. Well, look at Biden, long time pro Israel, but he can't even take it anymore. It's horrible what's going on. He told him to knock it off, and he won't listen. He's just self absorbed. He thinks he's all. He's always been a pro. Well, he's another malignant, narcissistic sociopath that's in the yeah. same category as Putin and Trump as far as I'm concerned. And then you got Jared saying, oh, I hope they wipe out everybody in Gaza and we make that land, we put hotels and stuff. Jared Jared Kushner should not rest on his laurels because he too will be seen a judge. He Trust is, me on this. I wonder how Jared Kushner is going to look wearing orange sliders and an orange... I've often, when I looked at who's going to jail, and Kushner. I saw a lot of insurrectionists, Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, uh, Matt Gates, all these people. When I looked at Jared, I always saw him in the orange jumper, but I never saw his wife going. Oh, um, I agree. Oh, this is a good one. City Girl says, hello, Auntie Mel and Linda. Linda, I have your book and I read it in one day. Oh, thank you. And it is as if you were sitting at the kitchen table. That's what everybody says. Yeah. My friend it's Rosaire. It's only 10 pages, so it's easy to read. But my yeah. Friend, my friend Rosaire said that. I'm I'm waiting for my autograph copy. <laughs> he said that? No, I said that. I'm waiting. Oh, for- I just got them. I'm sending them out now. I sent 50 the other day. People ask me if I've read Linda's book. I go, no, I'm waiting for them. No, no, you have a cop. Oh, I think I, yours is in the mail. You might even get it today. Checks in the mail. Oh, it's I the sent, hard copy. I sent you a check today too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he Should sends me a that? check because he wants to. It's, will you please be my friend? Check. Yeah, I said, of course, of course. <laughs> She'll get the check when I get the book. I'm oh, teasing. <laughs> okay, this is good. It says, as if you were sitting at the kitchen table, tell me about yourself. So my question relates to the Palestinians who are undergoing genocide right now with many women and yeah. children. and also they're being harassed by the uh they're being harassed by the uh uh, uh hamas right or hamas is in the middle of them she says will anybody be held to count for what is going on in gaza the answer is yes they will be but can i tell you guys something i had a flash the other day and i'm just going to bring it up here i hope i'm wrong but i feel a lot of the people who are are out of the country. They either moved them out of the country, they kidnapped the people they kidnapped, or they're already gone. They're already dead. I think they're already gone. Yeah. Like they they try to use that as a coin, but they really don't have enough live people to use it. So that's what I'm picking up. Okay. So you gotta go pretty in a minute. Yeah, but I've got a little bit minute. In a in a in a minute. Okay, Nancy Faye says, Auntie Mel and best-selling author, Linda. Yay. <laughs> this Tuesday, the Supreme Court hears oral arguments on banning mefepristone, Mef- 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 I'm, I'm mispronouncing it, the abortion pill, and the FDA's authority to regulate it. What outcome do you see? I probably, I can't even believe they're hearing arguments on it. Um, you know, at some point, I see Roe v. Wade being upheld. And I'll tell you where the courts and these politicians are making their mistakes. These pharmaceutical companies have mega bucks. And just because it might look like they might lose a few battles, they will not win the war. They're going to put okay. bucks behind candidates or, that are going to do what? Push their product. Um they might kick it back to the states, but that's going to be a nightmare because if they say, okay, certain states will say you can't have this pill in this state and other states say you can. What about the the pharmacies, like the chain pharmacies? It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, 
I I don't see it. I don't see it banned. What do you What do you see, Linda? I don't see it banned. I don't either. Hey, but, listen, just a thing came through with the New York Times. So Bolsonaro is running. Who? Bolsonaro. Running for what? Isn't that the guy who who came and stayed with Donald Trump? They said security camera footage obtained by the Times shows Brazil's former president spent two nights at the Hungarian embassy. He's 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 hiding. Oh. Wow. Yeah. He's, he's running away. I see. He's running, yeah. Well, they're gonna catch him. Oh yeah. And I see him being brought to trial and cool. found guilty. That's what I get too. Um okay. So you you had a meeting at at uh one uh about one about one ten, but I'm just okay. Yeah. We've got time. We've got time for maybe two more. Okay. Okay. Uh, Maritza says, uh, hi there, you two. Hope all is well. Trump always seems to slip through the cracks. <clears throat> Will we see any of his trials uh, happening and finish before the November election? I can't wait for the name Trump to become a distant memory, something we only read about like the name Hitler, the name being associated with negativity and discord. I see I see a couple cases coming to trial before the election. I see, well, the one that's gonna happen, they picked the jurors April 15th, that'll be done. That's right. That's, the, that's a hush money case in New York. And I yeah. see New York is still gonna prosecute him for um, for fraud. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. My guy said this very clearly to me. I just want to assure you that he will not win even if he didn't get on trial for anything. That's true. His numbers are going down. And even that khaki pants guy that talks on M MSNBC, as he's looking at the numbers, like in Georgia and stuff, he's saying he doesn't have the numbers to win. Doesn't He doesn't. So everybody just breathe. Okay, I'm going to finish it with this. Kathy Reagans. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. She says, hello, lovely Linda and marvelous Auntie Mel. <laughs> I really love Linda's amazing book. I read it in one night. I, wow. highly, I highly recommend Linda's book, Unveiling And the audio version is coming out in a week or so. Okay. She says, um, Linda's book, Unveiling the Extraordinary, you'll, you'll be hooked. Auntie Mel, I hope you and Gary had an amazing birthday vacation. Yes, I did. We were visiting friends in St. Croix. I really missed you last week on various uh, corroborations. Blessing to both of you. Thank you, Kathy. That is so... Sweet. Thank you, Kathy. So the Chicago event uh, in September, fly in the yep. day before. If uh, Please call my office, 847-590-5411. And the dates are September... That's it's Thursday, September, it's Thursday evening, September 26th, all day Friday the 27th, all day Saturday the 28th. Okay. And um, it's going to be a, a really informative spiritual, and we're calling it Sacred Chicago Connections. Sounds great. <laughs> so, works. Thank I'm, you, my friend. All right, sweetie. All right, everybody, stay Bye, well. Bye, you guys. Next week, Linda's on my show. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm on, you're on my show. I'm, I'm on sorry. your show now. You are on my show. Yeah. Who's on first? I don't know. Yeah. All right, sweetie. All right.